guess I'm live. <laughs> Welcome to the broadcast tonight. Word for the word broadcast. I was looking here. Hey, it's usually got a different uh, viewing on the screen, but I must have missed it. Wasn't paying attention. So welcome to the broadcast tonight. As we continue our series of messages on fasting and praying, tonight we want to look at the rewards when you do fast. And I'll probably, in the next six months, will probably start fasting myself more than usual. But um, there are rewards to fasting. Turn to, we already know from Matthew 6 that Jesus said we're go, it, it's, a, it's a, a way of life should be for believers in the Lord to fast. So tonight, Isaiah 58, verse 6 will be our text tonight. And God gives us some of the rewards of fasting. Uh, let's pray together. And we'll get right into the message tonight. My wife said she's got to fix something. So. You're crooked. Uh, I'm crooked on the screen there. Yeah. So she's fixing it there. Appreciate that. And I must be straighter now than I was. <laughs> Let's pray together. Father, bless the broadcast tonight. Bless your people wherever they may be found, Jesus, and then save the sinner nearest to hell, Jesus, as we lift you up, the only Savior of the world, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so let's look at some of the benefits of fasting and praying. Um, Isaiah 58, 6, Is not this the fast that I have chosen, God says? The first thing he says here that he will do to loose the bands of wickedness. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means bands are things that hold you back. Mm -hmm. So when we fast, God says he will supernaturally break things that are holding us back. And it could be a number of things, but Hebrews 12, 1 says, let us lay aside or let us loose every weight and the sin which hinders us from running the race. And we are in a race. So so Isaiah 58, 1, the Lord says he will loose the bands of wickedness, sins that hold us back. And then he says to undo the heavy burdens. So you may have heavy burdens in your life. When you fast, the Bible says he will undo these heavy burdens. Undo here means to shake off. So he will literally, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit that lives in every believer in Christ's heart, uh, break and shake off the burdens which are burdening you down. Then the Bible says when we fast and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Wow. So he says now he fasting will... Uh, free us from the oppressions that are oppressing us. Acts 10.38 God anointed Jesus with the Holy, Sc Holy Ghost and with power who went about uh, doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Now I remember when I first got saved and started going to it was then Valley Falls Free Will Baptist Church. Pastor Carter preached a message and taught us that a Christian cannot be possessed, but they can be oppressed. A Christian can't be possessed by the devil because he has God the Holy Spirit in his heart, but the devil can oppress us. Well, I've got good news for you. If we start fasting, those oppressing spirits will be, uh, we will be freed of them in the name of Jesus. And then the Bible says to break every yoke. Did y'all read that in verse 6? A yoke is a bondage or a bad habit. I remember back in 85, before I went to Bible college, I was up to two packs of cigarettes a day smoking. And the Lord delivered me from that habit, that, that uh, vice. Uh, so when we fast, bad habits will be broken. Uh, fasting will break strongholds. Praise God. Now in verse 8, if you look at verse 8, verse 8, 
Now, we don't want to skip verse 7. Because if God's going to be doing all this stuff for us, and he will if we fast, he expects us to do some things for other people. We're blessed to be a blessing. Is it not to do your bread to the hungry? We should feed those who are less fortunate. And that you bring the poor who are cast out to your house. We should take care of the poor if we're able. When you see the naked that you, over, that you cover him, we should give them clothes when they have no clothes. And that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. Then verse 8 says, When we fast, then shall your light break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. Verse 8 says, The glory of the Lord shall be your re reward. So we see here, uh, when our light will break forth as the morning when we fast, you will have bright, you will have new, fresh revelation uh, from God, a rhema word. You will be enlightened about the things that matter, the things of God. The Bible says that uh, fasting brings our health uh, back to the way it should be speedily. And it says that our righteousness will go before us. The glory of the Lord will be your rear, rear guard. Now we know, according to Psalm 23, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. But God says here, if we fast, the glory of the Lord will be our, re, our rear guard. He will guard us. Our righteousness will be our leader. Uh, there will be no frontal attacks, and God himself will protect us uh, from the things that come up behind us, the ones that we don't see or expect coming. And that's also one of the benefits of paying tithes to the Lord from, uh, from what God blesses you grossly. The Bible says he'll open the windows of heaven, he'll put a hedge about you, and protect you, and keep the devourer off of you. Uh, verse 9, another reward of fasting. Look at verse 9. Then shall you call, and the Lord shall answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here am I. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. So God says we will have quick answers to prayer if we fast. If we cry out, God will be right there with us. Look at verse 10, another benefit of fasting. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, so you got to do these two things, help those who are hungry, help the afflicted soul. Then shall your light rise in obscurity and your darkness be as the noonday. So God is saying uh, that the darkness that you are walking through will be broken up and your success that God gives you will shine forth. And verse 11, if we fast, he says he will do this. And the Lord shall guide you continually. Well, that's good news. And satisfy your soul in drought. So in other words, if we go through a recession or a financial crisis or whatever, God says that he will satisfy our soul and make fat your bones. In other words, he will bless us. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters uh, fail not. Uh, God says not only will he guide you, but he will satisfy your soul and bless you materially during a financial a famine. God will take care of us. Even in a famine, uh, he will make us fat. Verse 12, and, and they who shall be of you shall build the old waste places. This is talking about your children and your grandchildren. You shall raise up, found, found, up the foundations of many generations. So God's telling you and I that he will bless our children and our grandchildren if we will skip meals and fast. That's what he's saying. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. God is saying that relationships that have been restored shall be restored, that have been destroyed, excuse me, shall be restored with fasting and you will have an overflowing of abundance that will overflow onto your children and your grandchildren uh, and then a few more ver oh, verses here 
verse 14 says, Then shall you delight yourself in the Lord. In other words, when you fast, you will draw near to the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord. And God says, I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. And, and what does God say? For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. See, God is not a man that he'll lie. God keeps his promises. So God says that if we fast from the world and feast on the word, if we fast unto the Lord, he will bring you all these blessings mentioned in Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 14 that I read tonight. You might want to write those verses down and share them with people and also reread them for yourself tonight. So that's all I've got for tonight. Amen. Hope you're enjoying these sermons. we got, I think, two or three more on fasting and prayer. And so we continue to uh, learn a lot about the spiritual uh, the spiritual things of God. Amen. All right. Make sure you get your prayer requests and prayer supports in. There'll be a place on my Facebook page for you to leave those at the appropriate posts. And also on the YouTube channel, you can leave your prayer requests. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Clay Cordell. And also you can follow us here on Facebook twice a day. Um, well, I had the scriptures wrote down. Let me get this. Let's see if Brother Mark's on here. Uh, Sister Pam's on here. A few people have commented, my wife and Sister Pam. So there's, there are benefits to fasting. And I'll send these scriptures to Brother Mark here. Um, thank you for everyone that shares our broadcast and prays for our broadcast and decrees blessings on our broadcast. And, uh, and 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 all that you're doing out there praying for us and, and helping us the best because we wish you the best in Jesus name alright you can email us at cordellclayton at yahoo.com you can write us at 119 Terry T-E-R-R-Y Avenue Inman I-N-M-A-N South Carolina 29349 or you can private message us on Facebook anytime. Does anybody have a special request tonight before I close in prayer? Anybody else put it in the comment section. Take a little break here from speaking. All right. God bless everybody. Uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Probably. Okay, here we have a prayer request coming across the screen. Please pray for my sister, Cindy. And her mama and John, that's Cindy's husband. Uh, Pam's children and grandchildren. And Poncho and Pam, that's her husband. All right, let's pray for these. Anybody else have a request, put it in the comment section. Anybody else? All right, let's pray together a corporate prayer where two agree on earth. It'll be done in heaven according to Jesus. And Jesus, who is God, cannot lie. Father, we pray for uh, our family, friends, and we pray tonight for Cindy and John, healing, healing, pardon, provision, protection, personal guidance, whatever they need. Same for her mother, same for her children and her grandchildren and her husband and Pam and her business. Hedge, bless, move, prosper them, and uh, within the next 30 days, do something real special for them, Jesus, that they're praying for. In Jesus' name, amen. So that was in 30 days of today. So something's going to happen for y'all by August 8th, Pam. Amen. All right, good night, everybody. We'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll be on about, I'm still on vacation. <laughs> And so I'll be on about 11 a.m. And I'll be on tomorrow night about about this time. And uh, we'll see y'all then.